and we go fight that no one will ever, ever forget. <laughs> I'm not crying. The promo is not making me cry. It sucks. Worst promo. Ah, who am I kidding? That build up to the show is beautiful with the music and everything. Here's two sins off already. Here it goes, so shut it up. Limp Biscuit, folks. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Jim Ross introduces WrestleMania to us twice. WWE trying their best to make this ramp to the ring be the longest in history by curving it to the left at the near halfway point. I bet the wrestlers were like, almost there, turned around, and then, damn it, not even halfway there. Matt Hardy version. The one thing I never liked about Matt Hardy version 1 was the crappy quality footage of his entrance, even though the nostalgia of old school online videos is there. Oh, I'm the champion. This referee is an asshole. We're only 20 seconds into the first match at WrestleMania and he looks to end the match with a quick count. Talk about unprofessionalism. And the challenger is Matt was already starting to fall before Rey Mysterio could connect with that spinning heel kick. Oh there is no way in hell that the referee freaking missed Shannon Moore attacking Rey. Looking straight at the action, and even if Matt was blocking part of his vision, he would have easily seen Shannon out of the corner of his eye. But he got the score! Another case of Matt falling before he even got hit by Ray at all. That's twice in two minutes. Oh come on, the referee couldn't hear that? This WrestleMania was epic, but the opening match sucks so far. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. Here's the center move for that awesome Hurricane Rana counter from Ray. Victory due to grasping the ropes for leverage is always a sin. Miller like catfight girls. Previously on WWE. WWE's favorite band. Wish we could say the same thing about Limp Biscuit in the present day, but nope, these days WWE don't give a shit about them, which is always a sin. The Undertaker literally waited almost four minutes before he realized the song was playing for him. But still, this freaking entrance with a live performance of Roland? Holy fuck! Undefeated streak is in serious jeopardy! The Undertaker's undefeated streak is in serious jeopardy cliche. Spitting on vehicles. What did that motorcycle ever do to A Train? Damn, that's two matches in a row that someone tried to sneak up on their opponent from behind and got thrown out of the ring as a result. And we're only 20 minutes into this show, too. The Big Show's hand got stomped, yet it's his face that's in the most pain. Talk about defying logic here. Now he's gonna feed Undertaker to the Wolves. I wouldn't really say wolves, considering there's only one opponent on the outside of the ring in this case. And now a choke. A train is clearly not choking Undertaker at all. Can you not see him ramming his arm across Undertaker's face, Michael? Right there, cross arm breaker. Why isn't the referee telling A train to get out of the ring? Instead, he's asking A train if he submits, despite not being the legal man. At what point did the Big Show tag him in while being locked in an arm bar? I've seen the rules. Those two had to tag each other in, which they clearly didn't. Look at this. What a coincidence that we can literally hear a train whistle in the far distance of Seattle. You ain't so bad, big dog. Monologuing is a villain's greatest weakness, even in 2003. Dominating the big dog in his yard. In 2003, when you hear big dog in his yard, you'd laugh because that sounds funny. In the present day, some would probably still laugh to the humor, whereas others would break whatever they're holding in their hands. Shut up and fight, says the Undertaker. The Undertaker didn't even say anything. What are you talking about, Michael? True, Nathan Jones was originally The Undertaker's partner for this match, but since he's no longer an official participant in this match, how is this legal? Nathan attacks Show, and then A-Train, and the referee never calls for the disqualification, which would have actually ended The Undertaker's undefeated streak. Oh my god, it's the middle of the night. Skip! Oh, look out, we're getting- Pre-match assault. What the hell are you doing? Defending my women's championship and making sure I retain it. What the hell do you think I'm doing, Jazz? Let me tell you folks, that dog will hunt. And now I'm reminded of that disgusting moment when Vince McMahon forced Trish to bark for him. Thanks a lot, asshole. Roll up, can't you hold her? Intentional wardrobe malfunction. The Rock has sold out every WrestleMania he's ever been in. I indeed am a sellout because I sold out all arenas, cliche. I've done the one thing I've never done, it consumes me. Well, there's also The Undertaker. You never beat him at WrestleMania as well. Also, The Rock coincidentally inspired John Cena to whine and complain about not beating a certain wrestler at WrestleMania following the event nine years later. The will be the champion. Jeez, does Tony Chimmel ever sound enthusiastic during his days of being a WWE ring announcer? Because here he sounds like he's bored out of his mind and doesn't want to do this job. Considering both Rhino and Chris Benoit missed out on the previous year's WrestleMania, I guess you could call their team the injured last year team. Yeah, well, here we go. We're going 
The referee didn't even signal for the bell to ring since all six wrestlers are in the ring and not in their respective corners. That timekeeper jumped the gun in my view. A triple threat tag team match without one member of each team allowed in the ring at one time is stupid. Doesn't even feel like a triple threat at all. More like a one-on-one -on -one contest with some extras in the background. The way Eddie Guerrero tripped upon colliding heads with Chris, flailing his arms around before collapsing looked pretty weird to me. I wonder how Edge feels now. Edge There's a tag team title match going on and all of a sudden Michael randomly decides to bring up the fact that Edge is not here at WrestleMania due to a neck injury. It's understandable to wish him well in his recovery, but we're in the middle of a championship match. Show must go on. Who's the cut open lizards and stuff when I was in science class? Why the fuck does that matter, Taz? Who cares if you dissected lizards in science class? Chris proceeds to pin Charlie Haas in the teabag formation. Yes, they are. Hit off the snap suplex. Wrong, Michael. That was a snapmare takedown Rhino hit on Shelton Benjamin, not a snap suplex. It's easily noticeable. How can you not tell the difference? That's not what Eddie said, you moron. Well, Chavo Guerrero definitely earned a sin remover for that amazing head scissors to Shelton, no doubt. Why the hell did the referee hesitate before counting the pinfall on Chris? That's not even Los Guerrero's respective corner, so how is that tag from Chavo even legal at all? Third segment, still have completely zero interest in whatever the hell this Miller-like catfight girls thing is about. I mean, is Jericho gonna become a movie star here tonight? Chris Jericho's too good to be a movie star, the way his resume looks even in 2003. That cardboard cutout of Master Yoda, never saw a more random sign of the crowd at WrestleMania than I do now. Whoever set up Shawn Michaels' own confetti blaster is an asshole for leaving some of them empty. Can't deny that seeing Shawn Michaels perform an entrance like that at WrestleMania is always awesome to look at. Why wouldn't you start a wrestling match off with wrestling hoes? Jim Ross would be great at Cinemasins 2 expansion. Winner up WrestleMania 19 to bring you Titanic. Chris Jericho is an idiot. You can't win by submission on the floor. Chris arguing with a referee about counting both him and Sean when he was the moron locking in a submission hold outside of the damn ring in the first place. Did Chris actually think that countouts were not a factor in this match? Sean is prone for defeat, so this is the perfect time to pose for the crowd and allow him to recover. This strategy totally worked for everyone else who did it. I'm better than you, cliche. Oh boy, here comes the copyright infringement sin. Last time I entered this sin, it nearly destroyed the whole counter. Okay, since Chris did the kib up and then Sean's pose and even tuned up the band to hit successful switch in music, I'll just add three sins and avoid going through them individually altogether. Counters back. Roll up after roll up after roll up removes the three sins that were added a very long time ago for Chris's copyright infringements. Jericho trying to put all that weight for another. Oh, Look at this. And there's another sin remove for that awesome strength to get out of the pinfall like that. Chris kicked the referee into the ropes, who somehow survived that without getting knocked over. And even if he survived that, he didn't disqualify Chris for putting his hands on an official like he should be doing. I think that's the quickest I've ever seen Chris Jericho lock in the walls of Jericho in any match at WrestleMania. Made it all the more intense. Chris's acting is right on point with the desperation. Great job. Damn, many sins have been removed just for this one match. Post-match assault. Also, Chris is a dick to Shawn's Michaels. Limp Biscuit! Okay, the first time was great, but Limp Biscuit seriously performs twice in one night. I removed Sins the first time. For the second time, I'm adding one. For a WrestleMania catfight! The entire existence of this segment is worth 10 Sins alone, no matter how hot the women are. Also, since Jonathan Coachman is pretty much a failure during this event, it's a no wonder he's wearing a Mariner shirt. Yeah, and we'd like to get back to it, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I swear, if this keeps up, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Oh, holy shit! I need a moment. Look at Coach! I knew he was a loser! You could have easily told that he was a loser just by looking at his shirt. We'll be the next world champion. Honestly, Booker T's promo leading up to this World Heavyweight title match was very moving. Bringing up the past and what he fought for to get to this spot, well deserving of a couple sin removers. All his accomplishments and his true pedigree. Is that supposed to be ironic, Jerry? Triple H has never been arrested. Sure, that's a major accomplishment in real life, but Booker lived up to his mistakes. And either way, how the hell does that affect Booker T's wrestling resume in comparison to Hunter's? Right, we're in a 
question. Yeah, I've got one question. Why the hell did you suddenly ask us if we had any questions? See how reserved and how the bell rang once again without the referee even calling for the match to begin. Wait for the referee to signal, you dumbass. Booker T should have known he'd have never met nothing when he was born on a pool table. Booker T born on a pool table? And also, Jerry mentioned something about Booker's family portrait being a courtroom sketch. I just might have to add in 50 cents for the extreme racism throughout this entire match. Wow, that landing from the DDT could have snapped Hunter's neck. Good thing it didn't because that was amazing. Look at that look of concern on the face. On the face? So instead of a face, Ric Flair has a face? What in the hell is a face? I haven't seen anybody use this move in 10 years. Jim Ross repeating over and over and over again about how we have not seen an Indian death lock in years. We get it. That arrogant oh, smile wait, 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 on his face. Wait, Copyright infringement. He interrupts it and rolls. Referee knocked down a crucial point in match cliche. The number for the police, 911 donuts. Jerry Lawler continues to piss me off with this stupidity. That's a very disrespectful on the part of Booker T. Blair has no business up there, damn it! Seriously, how is Jim Ross not a co-host with me on this show? He's up there! And look out! Booker clearly missed Hunter completely. Damn, that's gotta suck. Big moment possibly happening, and it's all ruined by missing your opponent completely. He's got the hand on it, yeah, and it's over. When the world title match ends in an awkward fashion at WrestleMania, you know something is definitely wrong here. I hate you because I created you. So does that mean Vince McMahon hates literally every one of the wrestling gimmicks he created over the course of his tenure in WWE? Hulk Hogan tears up a sign that actually trashes Vince rather than supports him. I would have thought for that case, Hulk would approve of that sign. Also, fans' property damage. Who created Hulkamania? Well, if Vince had the gimmick idea, then he did. If Hulk's only response is the fans, then Vince still wins that debate. I don't know if it'd be realistic in this franchise, but there you go. Again, the rules of this street fight are simple. There are no rules. Well, then why did you even bring it up if there are no rules, idiot? The face, no, no, in a coming... Ah, you missed that punch. Driving the elbow. You've got to be kidding me, Michael. Do you honestly believe Vince's elbow is located where his knee is supposed to be? Balls count anywhere. There are no rules. Anything goes. In case you're too stupid to know how a freaking street fight works. After that strategy. Another case of copyright infringement. And Jesus, it's incredible that Vince managed to keep himself in that type of shape. Hulk Hogan is addicted to barricades. That's odd. Usually it's the table that gets destroyed, not the Spanish commentators themselves. Also, that chair shot to Hugo was a lot more hardcore than any other chair shot delivered in this entire match. It's still in control. Vince is a dick to Hulk's Hogan's. This is just a oh, Since Hulk clearly blocked that chair with his hand, it makes it obvious that he bladed during this part of the match, which is always a sin. I don't know how many times I've said copyright infringement during the sin video alone. Is he gonna die? Vince was clearly nowhere near the top of the ladder when he leaped off it. Well, that's definitely a psychotic look. Here's a sin off for that. No, it can't be! No way! Is it? What do you mean, is it him? Camera gets a freaking close-up of Rowdy Roddy Piper's face and Michael still questions whether it's really him or not. You are such an idiot. When you see Roddy prepare to strike Vince with that pipe, you already know that he's going to turn around and hit Hulk instead. Something we've seen pretty much every time this situation occurs for anyone. This is a street I am adding in five cents for the referee stopping Vince from using a lead pipe in a fucking street fight! What the hell's his problem? I think Brian Hector was a shot! Ha ha, you failed. Instead of immediately going for the leg drop, Hulk wastes time posing for the fans and giving Vince many chances to recover. I told my boss Vince McMahon to take his job and shove it for the 1,000th time. The Rock has never defeated Stone Cold. So, in other words, the third time's the charm tonight. Gotcha. This is his life! This is his destiny! Something something life, something something destiny in WWE cliche. The Rock is the one who was obsessed with defeating Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania, right? If so, then why is he walking out on this match in the first 40 freaking seconds? Both The Rock and Steve Austin have been outside the ring for quite a length of time, and is the referee counting them out? Nope! He's standing close by them outside the ring as well, forgetting this is not a no disqualification match. Also, that dumbass's sign, as if people are going to randomly tune out of WrestleMania and a match between freaking Steve Austin and The Rock just to look up your damn website. Almost to the level of the Oklahoma Sooners. <sighs> Deja vu of WrestleMania 13. Vest theft, I suppose. 
The referee is doing everything in his power to stop Steve from punching Rock, except what would actually work, and that's COUNTING! Yell at Steve all you want, he ain't gonna stop unless you count. Haven't we seen enough of that sin tonight? Alright, it happens another time during this match, so I'll just add a double sin and get it over with. The Rock didn't even connect that Stone Cold Stunner properly. Surprised that Rock didn't do several backflips and cartwheels during that overselling. As cool as it looks, the thing is, it's overselling. Especially when you can clearly see Rock push off the ground with his hands. Oh, look at this. Disqualify him, you idiot! It's not about Rock is addicted to Stone Cold Steve Austin's. I will definitely remove a few sins for Rock's continued determination to finally defeat Steve Austin at WrestleMania. Even though the last four minutes was Rock hitting a rock bottom, pin, waiting, and repeat. Also, remove another 20 sins as a sign of respect for Stone Cold Steve Austin, as this was his final match at WrestleMania and his final match in WWE. And he is no doubt one of the greatest wrestlers in WWE history. The promo leading up to Brock Lesnar vs. Kurt Angle showed the Royal Rumble result incorrectly, as Brock last eliminated The Undertaker to win the 2003 Royal Rumble match, not Matt Hardy. He is a three-time- Damn, I feel bad for Michael Cole having to call the main event of WrestleMania with a nearly destroyed voice. That's gotta suck. Well, here comes the pain! You know what I also like about WrestleMania 19? They actually go straight into the opponent's music instead of having them wait nearly two damn minutes. WWE really knew how to not be a time waster back then. Also, add Taz's catchphrase when he says, Here comes the pain, to the list of some of the most annoying repetitive catchphrases in history. He is the number one contender! Oh my god, Michael, you're a genius! How the hell did you know that Brock was the number one contender? And that's what it's all about, the WWE title. Here's what the WWE title looks like from this angle, and now this angle, and now this angle, and our champion is hilariously Kurt Angle. The, the true battle for the mayor position at Suplex City, and each suplex delivered in this match was awesome from both wrestlers. Kurt Angle is hooked into the cover, hooks the leg. That was clearly a one count, not a two count. As well, Ooh, a right hand by that weird way Brock Lesnar jumped all around upon being punched in the face by Kurt Angle. He seriously reacts to punches that way? <laughs> Kurt yelling for Brock to drop him, which Brock literally does next. In other words, stop spoiling what's about to happen. Shoulders driven into the ribs. Actually, Brock is delivering the shoulder strikes into Kurt's spine since he's hitting the center of Kurt's back. Oh, coming. Oh, Shit, I gotta remove three cents for the way Brock was thrown into the air like that. Oh, Taz's yell when Brock connects the F5. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Let's do it, Cole. Oh my god. Damn, this definitely fits into the category of willing to die just to win a strap of gold. Back when Brock Lesnar actually cared. Shame we can't say the same for him in the present day, but here's a removal of five sins. 